Hey guys, Kakarot197 again. This time with a review of the high grade GX's jacket from the Gundam Age anime series. And this kit was provided to me by my favorite online hobby store, Hobbling Japan. Links to buy our own down below. And the design and color of this machine alone might be enough to convince you to buy this bad guy version of the GX's. As a pirate machine, it is now painted in a much more menacing dark color scheme, the shoulders are made more pointy, and the head now has a nicely detailed skull and pirate hat motif going on. And talking about the detailing, just as with other age kits, it's nice to see the extra details added to this machine without going overboard. And as an added bonus, these of course also help with concealing the seam lines most of the time. Just as how the coloring is on point most of the time. Despite the jacket not being the most colorful machine around, you'll still have to crack open some paint in order to make this thing look perfect. For stickers, we get some black ones for the backpack, back skirt, lower legs and front skirts, two gray ones for the backpack, the usual eye sensors, a metallic yellow one for the back camera, and a metallic yellow one for the sensor of the gun that doesn't quite line up. For some reason, the sticker is rectangular, whereas the gun sensor is a trapezoid. The sticker is also too long. As for the stuff you still have to paint then, you'll need some light grey for the blade of the bayonet, and normal grey for inside of the collar and the bottom of the feet. And while you're there, you might also want to fill up this hollow part. Another one, by the way, can be seen on the joints of the elbow due to the design of the lower arm. But still, overall, this is a badass looking pirate mobile suit, even straight out of the box. You'll just have to put in some extra work for absolute perfection. As for the weapons and accessories then, already on the mobile suit we'll find two beam Vulcan guns on the head, a pair of twin missile launchers on the hips, and two beam sabers stored snugly on the backpack. And fortunately, they fit equally snugly into the hands and they of course come with two clear pink beam saber blade effect parts. The signature weapon then is of course the DOTS Rifle 2B, which comes complete with a bayonet. The rifle is on the bigger side, but the jack edge has no problem holding it, whether it's with one hand or with both hands. And if you don't want to use it, you can simply pop open this peg, slide down this panel on the back skirt and store it there. Just be careful because due to the size of the peg and the gun that it's desperately trying to keep attached, it is understandably a bit wobbly. For the bayonet then, you have two choices. Either have it clipped to the underside of the rifle or have the jack edge hold it with its hands. Just like the beam sabers, the fit is perfect and it goes very well with the overall theme. For defensive purposes then, we get a simple shield which attaches to the hand and either the side or the rear of the arm, depending on how you place the wrist. Unfortunately, it can't rotate or do anything else. And the final normal accessory then is an open left hand for more dynamic poses. Then because this is a remold of the GXS, it of course also comes with some leftover parts. We have the shoulders that are completely usable and can be switched out, no problem. And then there's the head, which had its eyes gouged out. They are pirates after all. On to the articulation then, the head is on a double ball joint with some really far forwards movement, the shoulders are in hinge joints that allow for some forwards, backwards and upwards movement, and even though the design of the shoulders might look quite restricted for the arms, the pointy bits do move to give the arms that little bit extra mobility. They'll also rotate round, bend at the elbow on two joints, and the hands are on the usual ball joints. They'll wiggle around, turn around and do everything a ball joint does. And the same goes for the waist, which has two of them, and we find even more of them on the backpack's thrusters. The front skirts then also have some ball joints, but they are molded together. Now, you can separate them, but that's not always the best idea when it comes to age kits. But I'm not about to change my ways for Gundam Age. 
Whichever option you go for then, this gives the leg some nice forwards movement, but the backwards movement is more limited due to the immobile back skirt. Sideways movement then is again really good thanks to the ball jointed side skirts that can also rotate around to aim the missile launchers as shown previously. Underneath the skirt then we get an extra hip joint and a hole for an action base, which will allow you to make full use of this machine's articulation. The legs will rotate around, bend at the knee on two joints with some nice armor separation, and finally the feet are on a hinge and ball joint combo for some nice forwards and backwards movement and really good rotation and sideways movement. Unfortunately though, these very ankle guard-esque pieces of armor are simply molded together with the lower legs, like a no grade from the 90s. I feel they really could have done more with this. Still. All things considered, the articulation of this kit does hold up very well today and combined with the accessories that it comes with, posing this thing is definitely a lot of fun. So as always, the inevitable question is, do you want to buy this? And well, considering the fact that for 1200 yen you're getting an amazing looking pirate mobile suit with an equally badass bayonet, I'd say that this kit is at least worth considering. Not to mention that this 10 year old kit can actually go toe to toe with many modern kits, despite the few flaws that I mentioned throughout the review. Especially when you're comparing it to some of the latest grunt model kits. Throw in the shoulders from the GX's then and you do get a neat little package for a very good price. What would have made it perfect then? is the addition of a beam axe and just a little bit extra attention to detail. Because even though this is a good kit when compared to modern grunt kits, when I compare it to the other two H kits that I've built, this one actually falls a bit short. Not by a lot, but enough to be noticeable. I guess that's just what you get when you buy pirate kits. So then, for some more size comparisons, here it is next to some more dark mobile suits, the high-grade Jim Quell and the high-grade Overflag. And finally, here it is next to the standard-sized Jim Custom and the always bulky Zaku 3. And that has been all for this review of this very piratey mobile suit. Again, if you want your own, the link is down below. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next time.